not really pay attention to anything in New Paul. She lives up in Carhonkson. So living here was started to feel very different. And that was the first thing I got interested in. Why are they doing this? Um, why are the students living in these dorms upset? And I started to get interested in Huguenot Street and the whole monuments discussion in the United States in general about taking down monuments and what that means uh, and how to do it. And I followed what was going on on the campus. I interviewed a bunch of people and I wrote an article for the Poughkeepsie Journal. Um, and then I went along to Historic Preservation Commission meetings and found out some of the things that they were doing. And so I got, I got interested in that particular issue. And I started writing, I keep a blog, I've been keeping a blog since 2008 on my uh, website, which is hosted by the Authors Guild. And I started writing some blog posts. Well, I write blog posts about that kind of thing. And when the pandemic started, I, I started writing about the pandemic more, uh, a blog called Virus Without Borders. So, but I have followed what's been going on. Uh, I follow what Susan Stetson Cohn is doing. I follow what the Historic Preservation Commission is doing. I follow what the folks at Huguenot Street are doing. Um, and that sort of focused my interest in, in this new place where I was living. Um, I just got very interested in it, particularly as it's become a national interest. You know, there's a discourse about it throughout the country and now even more so as though there's a discussion about HR 40, which is the reparations movement. So I'm, in, I'm involved in some of that. Um, I've actually hired a researcher who lives up in Stone Ridge to do some research about not just the history of enslavement in New Pulse, but um, the history of Jim Crow in New Pulse in Ulster County. So that is one side. The other, I have a, a, a master's degree in media and communications. I've done quite a bit of radio work. I did radio work um, for the BBC when I lived in London, um, but mostly interviewing. But I also know how, to, in the old days before digital, I knew how to cut tape. So <laughs> I see by hand cutting the tape and splicing it together. So uh, I was interested. So I have a, I, my major when I was a master was in, in radio production. I've never done any work, uh, I've been on television. Um, you know, I've been interviewed and, but I've never actually done any television production. So I worked very briefly for NPR. So I, the whole idea of public access television is very exciting to me. And, um, when I heard about it, I wanted to join some kind of committee in New Pulse just to, to be participant in what's going on rather than just an outsider always as a journalist observing, looking in from the outside and documenting, witnessing. So when I talked to the folks at the Village Hall, they told me about your committee and I contacted you. And that is essentially my backstory <coughs> in, a, in a quick nutshell. <laughs> well, that's great, great. Welcome, welcome to the committee. Thank hey, you. Carol. Thank you. So Don told me about a little bit of the background of your committee and more or less where you're sort of at getting things <laughs> off the ground. Kind of. It's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a fight and a struggle, uh, without doubt. Um, and and perhaps this is something um, that that you could certainly help us with, Carol. Um, we, we're fighting a battle with um, a giant called Charter Spectrum at the moment, and mm. they have all. Although they will do everything but admit it um, in in writing or in or verbally, it is their uh, remit, I believe, to try and remove public access television from the airwaves. Um, they're doing everything they can in terms of underhanded, um, you know, um, 
very questionable uh, decisions and, and making things incredibly difficult, not just for us, but I mean, if you, um, right. if you uh, listen to the, the rest of the guys, there's, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, the Association of Community Media, is it? Is that, or have I got that wrong? It's, it may not be association, is it? It's the, um, it's the ACM anyway. Alliance for Community Media. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, the Alliance, the Alliance for Community Media, um, that that has in it um, a lot of membership of, of all the uh, the P P A T V uh, stations throughout the country. Uh, almost to a person, everybody's got the same story to say about um, Charter Spectrum. That that they they uh, they do they'll banish you to digital Siberia. They'll change your channel number from a low number up into the high thousands. Right. Uh, they don't want to include it as part of the basic cable package. They're doing whatever they can to reduce whatever funding that they possibly can that they're obligated by the Public Service Commission um, to to actually provide uh, public access TV entities they're trying to pull that in any way uh including lobbying the government to so they can recover capital costs and all that sort of stuff um and they're making it extremely difficult whilst at the same time they're they're moving their they recognize a lot of people are cutting the cable and and you know watching now or consuming uh, media and over the internet, um, over the top streaming services. Uh, Spectrum right. Charter provide an over the top streaming service with absolutely everything in it, uh, where you can watch on any device anywhere, but it doesn't include local programming and there's no franchise fee collected for that, even though it uses exactly the same infrastructure with their internet delivery service um, that, that the cable runs over. So, so they, they've, you know, we're fighting with them at the moment. We asked many, many moons ago, years ago now, uh, to broadcast in HD. Um, we we moved ourselves up to a full HD workflow. Um, we we're ready to go. We we've even said we'll spend the money to um, install the necessary SDI to fiber con optical fiber converter um, at our expense to do that. You know, um, but they they just choking and and throwing curveball after curveball at us to do it um bob's now raised a, a complaint with the psc but the psc tends to act very slowly and and doesn't really seem like a, a consumer advocacy organization anymore you know they they offer more protection to the uh to the carriers rather than the consumer i would suggest there's um if you talk to enough people in New Paltz, and I'm sure Don can confirm this, uh, people are sick to the back teeth that they have no choice, that the internet that you get from Spectrum is probably second rate quality. Uh, I'm amazed right. it's still online right now, to be honest. I mean, it has a propensity, uh, especially this time in the evening, to become very congested on their hubs. Um, and it, it, there's no choice. There's, there's no... Um, there's, you can't go to anybody else. There's no for uh, right. for example, uh, are not in Verizon FiOS. So, it's 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 tricky. It's difficult, and and we're trying to fight this Goliath. To, um, well, I don't know. I'll let, I'll let right. Bob explain in 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 because he's probably got photographs and all that sort of stuff to show you of of what well, we. Let me just interject. In the midst of that, we carry on, and we're still providing top quality programming. So it's not, you know, it's not all a, a David versus Goliath thing. We are still doing our, doing the work. So I just want to interject that. So it didn't okay. seem like we so were. So what, cha what channel is it on, on my spectrum? 23. 23. 23? Yep. Okay. Let's start watching. Oh, sorry. Bob, it was your turn. I, I interrupted. No, it's, uh, you basically went over what we've been fighting for and Without HD, if we're just standard definition, uh, the programming looks really poor. And uh, I can show you uh, examples of that. But just uh, to let you know, there um, our frame size is about two thirds of what a HD frame should be. Wow. And uh, the resolution is very poor, where you can't really read text on the screen. Uh, a lot of it's. Um, so what is their argument for not allowing the HD? We're not providing it? They're not required to do it, they said. Not. 
That's okay. basically they're saying that the franchise agreement, every community has a franchise agreement with the uh, okay. cable company. And they're saying the franchise agreement just says we have to give you a signal. Doesn't matter what signal we give you. you know, it's, just a signal. Is, is, they are required by law to provide a public access channel, but they get no revenue from it. So, you know, it's uh, it's this, not yeah. their advantage in any way to support it. There's there's a real lunacy here, Carol, in so much as that they take our HD or digital signal, we have to convert that to SD analog to send it up to a, an antiquated piece of equipment. Uh, yeah. She's then sent up a fiber uplink to um, a demodulator where it's converted back into a digital signal. Um, but the standards conversion, I mean, they can't broadcast analog on their network. Um, right. It's 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 all HD, whether the programming's in HD or not. It's all um, all digital. Um, they have no capacity to to uh, show an analog um, channel. So the unnecessary standards conversion that's going on at the moment results in um, a, a really bad degradation in quality to the point where uh, it is almost unwatchable, especially if you're trying to get text oh, really? information. Yeah. I mean, do I, if you want to share, share your screen, Bob, I've, I've, I've set it up. You can show some pictures if you want yeah, to. Hold on a second. I'll make a point of having a look at it, too. During the week on my TV. Public access. So, and this has been going, this struggle has been going on for how long, Anton? Mm. <laughs> when, did, when did we first ask for HD? I, I want to say it's, it's at least five years ago, is when we first had that conversation with Kevin Egan. And basically, he, he dropped a shoulder at that point and said, no, it's not going to happen. Was uh, Kevin Egan then? He was director or is director of government affairs at Charter Spectrum. Um, Hold on a second. I'll show you. Sure. What... You're calling it Charter Spectrum? Yeah, they're owned by Charter. Spectrum's oh, their brand name. Okay. okay. So, uh -huh. so you... this... This is what an HD signal would be on the left. Uh -huh. and this is what we're showing. So, on the totally right. blurry. Yeah, and uh, let me see if I can find some others. Or color fidelity, uh, reduce size. Colors, colors are not too bad, but the text is certainly unreadable. Right. There's definite posterization goes on as well. Um, I don't know whether that was certainly we had a modulator that was failing and they've replaced it with another modulator, which is a 90s era piece of equipment um, because there was just snow. There was nothing that was visible at one point. What about when there's a, a person, a talking head? Um, well, you can see a Zoom meet. Do you see this with the IHOP on the left? Uh-huh. Okay, that's Spectrum's own channel six. No, Bob, you're looking at different. You have to share a different slide. Oh, okay, hold on. Uh, stop share. Share. You okay. see that? I hop. Okay. Okay. That's the theirs. Middle, that's theirs. HD. Okay. Yeah, this is our channels. Twenty three is in the middle. It's this a zoom channel. Yeah, okay. this is channel 24 right next to it. Um, okay. So, you know, uh, individual people, if we're doing an interview or something like that, that isn't terrible. I mean, it's, it's definitely something you can see, but, okay. but definitely with uh, anything that requires detail. Uh, we lose a lot of quality there. And we lose all this frame size. The frame size itself has gone down quite a bit. Sorry, Liam, you said something on this now. No, no, I said, you know, even a low signal when you have a talking head, there's not a lot of movement on the screen. So that's fairly easy mm -hmm. to compensate for. But if you're covering a ball game or a horse race or something where there's a lot of movement uh, mm -hmm. in a disaster. So you can't do much ambitious programming. You can only do fairly unambitious programming, so to speak. 
for the time being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we wanted to broadcast the high school football game, it, it just wouldn't that really wouldn't be possible. Work. Right. No. I, we've also yeah. invested quite quite heavily as individuals. Um, certainly, uh, Bob, myself, and Don um, together, we we sprung personally for equipment to um, to basically wow. do, do um, a fair bit of stuff. I mean, we we're actually capable of receiving an <clears throat> excuse me an outside broadcast as a digital stream from some device, be it a Mevo, be it a, a, right. a pro or whatever, some mobile journalist or anybody can actually right. send a stream. Uh, we could then take that and send that live to channel 23. Right. We also have the ability to, to send this to, um, to multiple streams as well. Um, so at the moment we're using YouTube, but we're probably about to change that because we keep falling foul of, their copyright okay. algorithms, which is a pain in the ass. So, so here's just just a question off the top of my head, as there is a new administration in Washington. Yes. And <laughs> and a new director of the FCC. Have you ever had any dealings on a federal level? It's not under the auspices of the FCC, is it? Oh, it has to be. No, the PSC is not, I think. The Public Service Commission, um, it's it's not, yeah. I, I'm not sure it's FCC is the issue here. Have you done any research about that? Because that's something I'd be happy to do. I would be honored if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> um, one of the things I could offer you is that I am a journalist and I'm very good at getting information and asking questions. So, um, uh I'm not, here's a question you don't know the answer to. Is the PSC under the FCC? That's a big question. Is it a state or a federal agency, Anton? The, the PSC is a state agency. Um, okay. Um, it's my understanding from all my learning and it, there's, well, deregulation is the name of the game right now. Anyway, and that's been true for many, many years, but, um, you know, you just find one friendly person at an agency who can do quite a bit. Mm. Well, we got some assistance uh, from Camille O'Brien, who's who in that? Senator, State Senator, what's his name's office? Uh, the Cahill? State Senator. Oh, no, 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 the no, new no. guy. New York, New York State Senator. Yep. Oh, is that in He's the in the legislature. He's up in Albany. Correct. Okay. Hold and on. You've been get, in touch with him. Yeah, let me get the whole mailing list here of who we got. Uh, Have you been, ever been in touch with Delgado? I think that's who we're talking about. Jeez. No, no, Delgado, no, we haven't. He's uh, our 19th, he's our he's 19th he's congressional Congress. district congressman, right? No, yeah. we've been only going through state, not federal. Okay. Because this was this is a state. Um, it's a state initiative. Yeah. Spectrum is under the auspices of the state. Correct. The franchise agreement is with the state. The franchise is with the state. Okay. Well, would you like me to do some digging on that for you when I have a chance? That would be great. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, if we if we get get the federal government in on this, that would be a plus. Because it reminds me a little bit of um, the struggle. You know, it reminds me a little bit of Verizon. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here's Verizon. They're putting up towers, but they don't put them up in places where they think no one's going to use their service. But then it's a catch twenty two because if they put the tower up people will use their service. So if, when I go up, I use Verizon. When I go up to my daughter's, there's no Verizon past a certain road, okay? You know, mm-hmm. it's dead, all right? So she's put up a Verizon tower in her house, actually. You know, you can buy these little towers so she can use Verizon in her house. So it's, you know, I don't understand their thinking at all. Of course, they're not going to have customers up there if they don't provide the service. They don't want to put the money in because they don't think they're going to have customers. 
So there we are. We're in a circle. They can get the customers to provide the service themselves. <laughs> well, and they're ahead of the game. <laughs> exactly. So, and that hasn't changed. My daughter's been up here almost 10 years. That hasn't changed in the 10 years she's been here. Um, I think it's a little better closer to where she is. Uh, and I only know this because when she, if I'm in the house and they have an, no electricity, you know, they, you know, they have a power outage. If I go down a little, you know, I can go down three miles. Last year, I had to go down three miles to get a signal. This year, I only have to go down two miles to get a signal. Oh, God. So, <laughs> so, so it's weird. Where we're up at, at this present moment in time is that we, um, Camille O'Brien uh, facilitated a conversation that we had and we'd got um, our town supervisor and our village mayor. Um, I think our village liaison was there. I was there. Bob was there. Um, don't know if Don was there. I don't don't remember. Yep. Oh, okay. Right. But um, so so it's taken a long time to actually get everybody in the same place at the same time. Um, I've repeatedly asked them to put their comments in writing because they're, I've learned through bitter personal experience a verbal agreement isn't worth the paper it's written on. Um, but they've, um, they have like in Britain. <laughs> well, same thing there, I guess. But, um, you know, it's, it's, they're so good at obfuscating and, and, you mm -hmm. know, um, so, so we've we've tried to take confusion out of this, but they're very good at, at, at not replying or taking forever to reply or, or, or whatever. So, who are you talking well, about now? Who is they right now? They being Charter Spectrum. Oh, uh, they, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we we get this meeting going on via Zoom, and right. to show you the the total, this was ostensibly to try and come up with a solution for how we can broadcast in HD um, and and to have some technical expert there to to suggest whatever they didn't bother with that instead they had a lawyer there who Ooh. their their um, their whole gig was to try and we have a recording of that if you want to foil for it interestingly enough you can um, but um, we said we wouldn't broadcast it, but that doesn't mean it can't be done if somebody else foils for it. Uh, they actually, the lawyer actually accused when our village mayor, Tim Rogers, raised his concerns about the fact that Spectrum consistently refused to address our concerns, she accused him of turning it into a therapy session. Um, so, so needless to say, uh, our village mayor kind of decided it wasn't a productive meeting at this point and and left they they then said they would initiate a site survey um and get back to us as quickly as possible several weeks went by and and bob had to chase them weekly to to actually get a response from them eventually they send uh something um which which was highly confusing um I wrote back and said, could you explain what this is? Because they, they just threw in a ridiculous quote, which appears on the, the basis for us to be buying all of the equipment, including the equipment they need at their end to do this and uh, paying a, a, an over the top maintenance charge or lease charge to rent the actual fiber optic link that we already have. Um, so, so I asked them to clarify that and um, they've been really good at not replying so far. Um, Neil Simpson was the sales engineer and I, I asked him to provide a, uh, a very simple workflow diagram of what's going on. Um, I'll just share my screen real quick, um, show you what we had. So um, he, he sent some more alphabet soup back and eventually I wrote to them and his manager saying, Listen, can you please just fill in the blanks here? So this is our existing signal path. I don't know if you can see this. So mm -hmm. this is us, uh, there's a lot more bef before this, but this is our broadcast server, which outputs in digital HD um, to a switcher. And from there, we, we have this um, ROS frame where we've got a, an analog uh, SDI, sorry, SDI to analog converter. And then we have to send that signal to their RF modulator, which gets then to an RF transmitter, goes up to the High Falls hub, received by them, demodulated, and then this is, what do you do then to take that onto your network? That's a perfectly reasonable question. It's please explain what you're doing. Because I think if they, mm -hmm. they put the meat on this, we, we can explain to them, just simply switch this for this and you've got HD. Thank you, you don't need to do anything else. Um, 
their proposal, if I just uh, close this for a second, what they proposed was um, this. Um, not that they drew a signal diagram. I, I did this myself. Um, so, in, in, uh, no, I've done the same one. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. Let's try that again. There you go. Is that, do you see this now? Does that say the proposed signal path? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so so um, what they would do then is they would have this um, this box, which is made specifically for, um, I guess, PEG stations. That's why it's called a PEG encoder, uh, public educational government. This enables okay. them to, it's basically all this is, is an MP4 or H264 encoder, um, which is has the ability to manage it. Uh, over IP like you can any box. We have one of these ourselves. It's uh, what we used to send our stream to YouTube. Um, but they're proposing to put in uh, an adver jack optical fiber ethernet transceiver to uh, make our existing fiber uh, link uh, basically a long ethernet cable. They would stick something the other end to do that. Uh, this then gives them the ability, this would be plugged into their management network so that somebody at NetOps or whatever can reboot this over over this um, here, over the over the existing fiber network. And then from there then, this goes as a, as a digital signal, H264 stream or whatever with embedded stereo. Again, tell me how that's getting to the network. This is where I'm at. I've, uh, they wrote back with a piece of alphabet soup. I, uh, the, I don't know, I copied everybody in on it anyway, so I'm still waiting on a reply. And that's where we're at with that. And Anton, you have been an absolute bulldog on that issue. I, I applaud you for that. I think if they fill in the blanks, the emperor will have no clothes. Exactly. That that is the the, the game plan. To be honest, on um, yeah. you know you can't you can't deny something and obfuscate it if it's if it's made simple. And that's what I'm trying to do is make it uh, painfully, demonstratively simple. What what we're trying to do here, and they've got no justification to ask us to buy the equipment that they need to, to handle our signal on their end and charges for the existing fiber optic uplink, which is what they're planning on doing. So yeah. they're trying to offload the entire cost of that to us. So that's that's not right, not fair. No. They're also holding the franchise agreement because there is a kind of hostage. Uh, the lawyer wanted us to agree to a franchise agreement before they gave us an HD signal. Oh. So clarify uh, the town of New Paltz has a franchise agreement which was is in place. The village refused to sign the new proposed franchise agreement going back maybe eight or ten years, a long time ago. So the existing franchise agreement that was in place from 1995 remains in, in effect with the village. Um, they don't like that too much, and they're trying to make that a condition of, of doing anything. And the town also, their franchise agreement is up in two years and they have to start negotiating within 18 months of the end of that. Don, was the original uh, franchise agreement with Time Warner? Yes. Spectrum's acquisition. So I think they're trying to make maybe some kind of point that they're not liable for uh, an agreement that they took along with everything else an acquisition of Time Warner. Uh, and now they're going you're to talking about the town and the village now, or are you talking about uh, Charter Spectrum. Spectrum? Charter Spectrum bought, okay. bought their. Um, yeah, they bought out Time Warner. From Time right. Warner. Right, I know that. Yeah. Agreement, uh, we're talking about was done under Time Warner. Under Time, I see. And 95, yeah. It had been acquired along with everything else that Spectrum yeah. took over. But now they want a nickel and dime, but maybe on a township by township basis, just to make it knuckle dragging hard for mm. everyone. I personally think they need more press. Well, I think so, you know, and you know, a phone call from the president's office would be wonderful if that's entirely doable, but um, because, you know, it, it just, it's just wrong. Um, that's the, the best way I can and describe it is it's just plain wrong. I'm looking for the, um, there's a part of the NYCRR code and I'm trying to find the section of it where we've got here. Uh, you know, um, Amy Klobuchar, who's not our senator, of course, 
has just written a book called Antitrust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's very interested in monopolies. A letter to her office or even a phone call. You know, she'll have an aide who answers the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's a very good point, Carol, because Spectrum doesn't operate only in New York State or in Ulster County. Of course not. Across the country. And the more broadly this heat is applied, the more quickly they'd like to put the heat, you know, make the heat go away. So um, she's very busy right now promoting her book and doing lots of interviews. She's positioning, I mean, she's a great, you know, she's positioning herself to run for president again. And um, she wants to keep on top of things. And this was is one particular issue she's taken on. So having her as an ally would not be a bad thing. Indeed. Because that's the larger picture, right? That's the larger picture is the monopoly and antitrust. Well, if, you know, if I could, I will, I'm happily call her office, uh, try and get an aide on the phone, um, see what happens. Worst that can happen is I don't get anybody on the phone. They don't answer, whatever. That's great. And it's, it's really appreciated to have the new perspective and the uh, you know, new way of thinking that you're bringing to the discussion. Thank you. For yeah, that. I think as it sounds like you've been going in, in a very, very painful circles with this company mm -hmm. and, and they are, they're not shy about escalating the conversation with lawyers present and God knows what. So it might be a way out of the, the painful circle to try and, you know, our federal government is in charge of some of this, some of the issues that you're discussing, you know? Yeah, they are in charge of the airways, so. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, this happened over, you know, this kind of monopoly happened over a period of time. It's very entrenched right now, obviously, because it's happened, you know, it's been going on for so long without any government oversight or interference. They, they uh -huh. firmly believe that they're above the law at this point, I think, to be honest. Yes, um, you part know, of the it, general mood. They, you know, they, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> but there is, there is a new administration. We will right. see. Yeah. Um, I'll find you if you if you really want to, um, you know, you may possibly be able to save yourself by gnawing off your own arm at the elbow. But I, I'm willing to send you the entire thread of the, the conversation from day one, if you want, because we've, we've tried to document everything. And there is uh, there is a section of the um, is it one seven eight spot six or something like that uh, mm -hmm. of the NYCRR, which which actually requires them to actually uh, provide the technical capability, um, but that's where their argument lies: technical capability for us to pray to provide playback and transmit programming to them. That's and and yeah, well, we, you're, you're we make welcome to that. I mean, I'm very good at skimming if I need to. So if you want to send me the whole the whole thing, I'll, I'll see what I can use. Okay. All right. All right. I'll dig it. I'll dig it out. If you're up for it, I'll let you have it. I'm up for for seeing what I can use before I make a phone call to become more knowledgeable. All right. Sounds sounds well. Thank you. I know. And uh, I've got um, <laughs> I've got um, a private writing a couple of private writing groups. I started at NYU uh, for the summer term on June 10. And I've got a manuscript I'm editing starting next Monday, but I will, I will in the interstices of my work and going for a, a swim down at Mike Ortega and walks and everything else, I will, I will do some of this. Well, thank you so very much. But you know what they say, um, you know, if you want something done, ask a busy person. So they say. <laughs> So they say. I've been taking <laughs> notes, you know, on all your observations and everything. But I'm happy to look at that, Anton, if you want to thank, send it to me. Thank you. Uh, I mean, really, you know, we're not we're not asking for anything particularly special here. Every other station in the entire network, uh, so long as you're not a PEG, you know, peon kind of station, um, send it the way that we want to send it. It just uses an SDI to optical fiber converter, okay. and okay. Oof, up it goes. Actually, New York City has high definition uh, PEG 
uh, and we know there are several other places. So we know it can be done and we know they do it. And then Spectrum does it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. So why aren't they doing it here? Okay. Because they don't want no. to. Um, putting it bluntly. So, um, yeah, well, I mean, we, we could bore you to death with the rest of the stuff, but I mean, we, I, I don't know, is there anything else? Well, just, do you want to I'll ask just, anything? You want to hang around, Carol? Do well, you I'll, I'll, I'll just listen to you. What else are you discussing? All right, fine then. So we'll, we'll jump on to uh, the proper item one agenda then, which is review the MPZT website. Um, so what we need now is a watch now page, what's happening. Um, online bulletin board would be ideal um, that that should be available uh, program and event submission forms and become a member supporter and donations all of this now because um, I suppose we better jump forward to four and then we can come back to one um, we I believe the IRS has now finally picked up our form um, they say that it's been sent to a, a review specialists we've uh, applied for a 501c3 status mpztv um so as a non-profit we recognize that you know funding from um franchise fees may be dwindling will be dwindling um we we need to figure some way of actually drawing more funding in to to keep the thing alive basically so uh that that will be something we can do um can we uh liam because i know your your sort of point on this can you i and bob um arrange a time when we can all get together <coughs> on Zoom, do some screen sharing and and because i got some ideas i'd like with the website we've also now got vimeo so maybe we can do a, a proper full-time watch page can we can we oh, in this yeah. In this next week, can we thrash out a time? It doesn't have to be in this next week, but in this. Well, I, I week. have I, I have a pretty flexible week uh, this week. Uh, well, what I need is half a day's heads up uh, to block out time. That's all. Uh, all right. Well, let, after this meeting, Chuck has went. If you're saying you're completely flexible, just just give us a day. I'll, I'll Bob and I will get our heads together then. What about we'll, um, Thursday morning? Could would Thursday morning work for the two of you? And what time are you talking about? Well, I, I, my morning starts at 1130. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> I might be I'm, Any time after coffee, you know, say, say nine ish. <sighs> or, or maybe yours starts at 1130. I'm not sure. Well, no, I, I'm, I do the other end of the day from Bob. He's the early bugger. I do the late night. No, but uh, as you know, Anton, I, I am doing. Um, yeah. Understood. Take care. So, really, so realistically, we're talking after five, really, aren't we? For you, then, Bob, to be honest, uh, after four, four fifteen. After four fifteen. Right. Can we uh, take an hour, say four thirty to five thirty on Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, possible. Hold on, I'm just looking right now. Um... As long as Bob isn't grading papers. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's actually the first grader's back at school, so. So we we talking about the thirteenth this Thursday. All right. Okay. Think, would that work for you, Bob? I think so. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to put PATV brainstorm. All right. Um, I don't know if you, uh, Don, if this is you want to get involved or whether you're interested well, for, or not. For fans of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, I always. Uh, uh, introduce yes, no, maybe as the Ted, the Ted guy, the dumb guy in front of the you camera. Lost him. You guys can handle the handle the tech stuff. What was his name? I Ted Baxter. I've lost everybody. Yeah, I think I've lost my audio. Just try again. Sorry, I turned the audio off. Fat fingers. Now, for for fans of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, I always just introduce myself as the Ted Baxter character. You okay. guys are the smart ones. I'm in front of the camera, so you, you can right. handle the behind the camera stuff. All right. So, well, let's do let's do four fifteen on Thursday then. Yeah. All right, four fifteen. And honestly, we're only going to take probably about a half hour to right. come up with a plan and and really do that. So yeah, sounds like a plan. Good, perfect. Moving on then, uh, Bob, you got anything for us? PATV coordinators report. Uh, besides what we've been telling we everyone about through the emails, uh, we did run a bunch of Earth Day uh, videos from Don. Um, 
Don, you were going to do a Earth Day video. Did that fall through? Um, not that I know of. I I did uh, cut into uh, eight episodes or eight eight segments, the uh, longer episode on the Millbrook Reserve, and I put that on Facebook for you know one new episode a, a a day for eight days. But I don't know that I remember planning on doing an Earth Day. Now, did you talk to Kathy Preston about you and? Oh 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 oh. Okay. So we did go to the Recycling and Reuse Center. We agreed to time with the people there. Uh, I arrived with Dan to do the filming, my camera, and the guys came out of the out of the the, the building, the two employees, and the new boss said, um, we saw your questions and I'm gonna let him answer some of the questions, but there's only two he's, he's good answering. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh. and apparently no one had told them anything about this. They had no idea what Kathy was looking for. I had no idea what Kathy was looking for because she said, I'm sorry, because uh, um, I thought, you know, they were all in, in contact. So we all agreed to um, tell them we had camera problems because no one really knew what we were supposed to do or what, or what we were doing. Oh, okay. And the questions I had sent were kind of big picture questions. So what do you think about global warming? You know, what are the, what, and they were, you know, these blue collar guys. And they were, you know, completely unprepared to talk about big issues. So it uh, was a train wreck, uh, narrowly averted. Okay, <laughs> reminding me of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, that's basically it. Uh, I will get to town hall to see our mail to see if we have anything from the IRS. All right. Yeah, because you know what they're like. They'll. Uh... That, that would be so we've actually done item three we did that already and I said that the way we're at at the moment is I'm trying to get a reply um, for them to actually put together a simplified uh, signal flow block diagram and we'll see if they do um, you know what the plan is uh, so yeah um, yeah if if the IRS has written to us we probably need to know about that because you know what they're like they sit on things for six months and they go can you reply by a week on Friday mm-hmm otherwise it goes to the back of the queue so if you if there's anything there let us know and we'll get on the stick with that um which brings us on to um occupying the studio space as pandemic restrictions are lifted so are the ymca still using the community center to your knowledge bob uh no i don't think they are they were using it as a vaccine site uh, i'm not sure if they're still doing that right it was only on a, on a certain day or so yeah Okay. So why don't we uh, why don't we start you know assuming that we're going to get our HD very very soon. Let's let's start building our bleeding studio. You know let's let's get that. I mean because we we've got people who would like to get involved and and maybe start making programs and you know until we got something where they can do it, it's going to be a bit tricky. Um, I don't know. I mean we could we could sort of limit it to you know access to any people who've been vaccinated or whatever i, I don't know what the the gig is with that um probably best probably would be best um but it certainly would be a boon to a lot of musicians um who would love to have a place where they could perform without being told to move along by the police <laughs> well it's not really that big liam <laughs> <laughs> I think we've just lost Bob. He seems to have just disappeared, and we'll have to see if he, he comes back. No, it's it's really not that big. It's um, it's it's one of these things that you'd be able to do with a like a trackless camera system and a lot of green screen. You could make it as big as it you like, but it's it really is quite a compact and bijou production. Well, I, I understand that, but a lot of a lot of people are, are doing their work on the street these days, and right. I give it an alternative to the street. Yeah, well, my my sort of plan is, you know, to 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 get some kind of shows going, you know, um, news shows, you know, anchored shows. I don't know uh, wherever it is. I'll say goodbye, Anton, and thank you. All right, Carol, thank you so much, so much. for joining us. Appreciate thank you. It. Totally thank appreciate you. it. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll be in touch. Yeah, right. Anton, this is off off agenda, but I, I I've been thinking about that that flow diagram thing. Yes. Can can we get someone to reverse engineer it and provide Time Warner on you know, Spectrum? Here's what you're doing. And have force me to say you're wrong. Here's what we're doing. Oh, we I can electrical can, engineer I can, somewhere to. I can make some sweeping assumptions, um, but 
you know, uh, or we could, if, if the, you know somebody who's, you know, if you know a Larry, the cable guy, um, ideally somebody in um, TV ops or whatever it is, who actually understands what goes on at High Falls. Uh, my cable modem just went off. Bob's, Bob's lost. See, told you. Spectrum mm -hmm. bites again. They've taken him out. <laughs> so uh, the Socrates public access channel, uh, Lighthouse 23. Yeah. They have a lot of, um, well, they have, they have some retired executives from NBC who are part of their committee and that big equipment place that has all the TV equipment. Market tech, market tech, yes. yeah. uh, I would imagine we can tap into some of the expertise there and potentially get them to reverse engineer and give us a, a, a diagram of what, again, if, if we can't get something out of, out of spectrum, maybe we can give them something and force I, them to I, say I, it's I, right or it's wrong. You're absolutely right. Show them the diagram Anton's already drawn up. Point to that one box and say what can and can't happen in here. There's, there's a finite number of options, it, right? It, let me. Uh, I'll send them to you, Bob. And have you got them already, or do you do you need me to toss them your way? The block diagrams. Oh, here's Bob back. Oh, okay. Um, I'll be happy to make contact with Socrates if you want to. Just you know, give me the the one or two best diagrams you think I can work with to get to them. I'll be happy to do the communication. I, I, yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced that anybody at Lighthouse TV would know. But I mean, what we could do with this is a friendly sort on the inside of of, um, of Spectrum. And if there is somebody who could could actually answer that, then that would be great. Hi, Bob. Um, apparently, Spectrum took you out. You you're obviously a public enemy. I said the code word. <laughs> you, you would delete it. Tech, you know, would, would be able to do that work. I just think, you know, if we've been at a at lockerheads for a couple of months now on this, I'm just wondering how we how we can break through the wall. So that's all. Well, pol politically, and you know, yeah, I mean, I we'll see whether I I'll give her I'll give her another day, and then I'll be getting a, the next snarky email. will be going out, you know, like was it something I said? You know, why why won't you? just provide this very simple information. It's not a state secret. Okay. It's not, we're going to set ourselves up in competition to you. This is not, you know, this should be something that's widely known. It's, there's no, there's no proprietary intellectual property going on here. You know, tell us, tell us what it is. I mean, I could fill in the blanks because they got priority modem switching there. So they will take the signal based on from what we've got right now. If, if the, the the uh, modulator goes live at village hall that knocks off the one at um the community center so there's priority switching there um and they had priority switching with the, the guy i was speaking to at um the city of poughkeepsie um he's been very very helpful they actually have the ability to broadcast in hd but he's only got an sd nexus if he if he put a an hd signal on there he'd be in hd Unless they forced, which is what they can do with the peg encoders, they can force them and lock them down, obviously, like they can with, um, you know, they can use Mocha to control a cable modem. Um, they can force it to actually just send an SD signal. <laughs> MPEG-2 or whatever it is, 3, I don't know. I'm not an expert. You know, Anton, one interesting thing about all the responses is they haven't said anything about bandwidth. Anything about bandwidth? Yeah, well, there is. We, we shot that one down like a long time ago. I mean, bandwidth doesn't apply, and you know, anymore. Certainly not when we've got a dedicated piece of bloody single mode fiber lying there. You, you... Yeah, I just want, want to make sure that when we when they come back at us saying, "Well, what about you know, it's taking up a lot of our bandwidth," we're ready to shut them down again because. They haven't talked about it. I figured they're going to throw that at us as a final. Uh... It's um, the 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 data rate is is ridiculously lower as a as a digital signal. Um, even even an uncompressed, um, you know, HD or three D SGI signal is 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 so much lay, uh, lower data rate than a, an analog signal. So much lower, yeah. But yeah, what are you going to do? It's got to be digital up the fiber. You can't send analog up light, you know. So so the laser transmitter converts it to digital in the first place, you know. So we're taking a a, a signal from digital and we're converting it to analog to convert it back to digital to send it up the pipe, and they convert that back to analog. 
with a yeah. demodulator the other end and then convert it back to digital it's a it's a wonder there's anything viewable at all to be honest yeah. it's, it's ridiculous it's it's lunatic it's, no i think on that note i can bow out until thursday yep that's, okay no uh, we're good so, yeah, so, so 4 15 thursday evening and uh, uh will you just send out a um a zoom uh yep uh, i'll 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 set up a zoom and i'll send you the invite and we'll we'll pick it up on thursday afternoon but um can we can we also i, I don't know maybe you and i bob make some plans i mean maybe if we push on a bit longer on thursday make some plans about what we can do with our studio space Sounds good. Uh, when we can start you know really getting into that so that yeah that's us then so if, if anybody officially i have to ask is there any other business what about the price of beer i mean we should probably talk about that anyway um thank you thank you very very much uh no so i move that we call the meeting uh to adjourn the meeting at eight gladly second all in favor aye, aye, aye. all right perfect we'll see you thank you so much um i'll send you the recording i started a bit late forgive me bob i'm an idiot um but i did start it at least i'll send you the recording bob and uh, we'll see everybody uh well uh, everybody but don on thursday at 4 right. good good luck and right. thank, you. thank you very much bye